5G is poised to create disruption on many fronts given its wired fiber-like throughput and low latency. At a high level, the next generation cellular standard will accelerate broad digital transformation within the enterprise, as well as enable operators unique monetization opportunities on a global basis. 5G is also more inherently virtualized and software defined than prior Gs. Thus, it provides deployment flexibility in a number of scenarios. So can open RAN and virtualized RAN deliver on the promise of agility in both CapEx and OpEx mitigation? Our discussion hopes to shed light on these topics and many more. So I'm pleased to have Derek Johnson on, um, on the call today. Uh, Derek has responsibility for marketing for the network's business unit at Samsung Electronics America. Welcome, Derek. You will. How are you? Thanks for having me. Doing great. Let's get started. And I kind of want to start with a sensational kind of, you know, question before we kind of jump into the meat of the conversation. But what's your take on all of the drama tied, you know, to the C-band deployment and the FAA and FCC? <laughs> I love it. Start with start with some controversy. Yeah. Uh, it seems so apropos. Um, you know, it was such a, it was, you know, a big milestone moment for 5G in the U.S., right? Um, some great stories, uh, you know, it, it, and again, you know, happy being in the industry and close to this topic, like there's, you know, we've been talking about 5G for so long and the promise of it. And, and so it was this big moment and it was rather unfortunate because it was all muddied uh, behind this, this, this narrative. And so yeah. it rallied around the situation, I think as an industry and went further than, you know, any other, other country in terms of design, deployment considerations, radio performance testing, you know, all of that to ensure that all of the constituent, you know, concerns were addressed. But, you know, my, my, my personal view on it is that, you know, the regulatory, how the, regulatory concerns, the timing, how those risks were characterized in the public was was largely, you know, not productive for, for anyone involved, you know, for the industry, for the aviation industry, for the general public, you know, and for certainly not for the regulatory bodies. So, um, you know, I don't know, what are, you know, what are your thoughts on it? What was your- I, You know, I think it's a classic, you know, scenario of you know two big governmental agencies just not coordinating very well. I mean, it was quite apparent that these concerns were raised well over a year and a half ago. And then, you know, push came to shove and there were the last minute, you know, pleas, you know, to uh to major operators, ATT and, and Verizon in particular, because they had purchased so much C band spectrum. And then I remember reading that Wall Street Journal, you know, article that was, it was interesting because it was a joint, you know, letter written by AT&T and Verizon. But at the end of the day, I mean, clearly, I think it was a lack of communication. And what we're finding out is that, you know, the, the altimeter effects were pretty mitigated. And these exclusionary zones that were set up around uh, 50 major airports, I believe, in the United States, I think addressed a lot of that. And but there are a lot of airports that are, you know, sort of out in the hinterland, you know, as well. And so certainly in my hometown of Austin, Texas, um, the airport is pretty set far out from, from downtown. So not really a, a dramatic effect, in my opinion, but uh, it's, it's been interesting to follow. But let's get into the meat of the conversation. And I know Samsung is very focused on VRAN. And there have been a lot of infrastructure providers that are sort of claiming first to market. And I'd love you to, you know, provide some examples of where of where really Samsung is really first to market. Sure. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, thanks for that question. So, you know, Samsung. Um, you know, I think first of all, we continue to kind of stay at the forefront of of you know virtualized RAN. Um, and and yeah, I think we've demonstrated um, you know leadership in the space uh, commercially. But I think what really differentiates us, you know, from other VRAN vendors, you know, and that includes, you know, it's a, it's a it's a broad space, right? There's a lot of, of uh, folks that have been after it for a while, um, some smaller firms, et cetera, but you also have the, you know, big, big telco, um, uh, you know, technology developers. But you know, what, what distinguishes us from, you know, from the field is, is that we've, you know, we've been able to first fully virtualize um, the RAN to the extent that you can, which means that our commercial VRAN solution you know, takes the, you know, splits the baseband functions um, into a fully disaggregated 
um, virtualized uh, distributed units or, or BDU and mm -hmm. a you know virtualized um, central unit. So it takes all those functions that you can put into a software um, and then throw onto a COT server um, and does that completely. And so in that solution is in commercial networks today. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been doing that since you know 2020 when we um, when we we started the collaboration with um, with Verizon on their you know on their um, their network. Uh, and so that VRAN collaboration has more recently, as we were just discussing, also included milestones like supporting the C-band launch mm -hmm. uh, or their C-band launch, which uh, you know interestingly enough uses massive MIMO radio technology, which, you know, massive MIMO radio technology, as you all know, is, is incredibly difficult to begin with in terms of the, you know, digital signal processing and the rate, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the RF processing that's involved um, to do in a, in a traditional hardware sense. And people were always like, oh, you can't do massive MIMO on, on virtualized RAM. Well, you know, our 64T, 64R commercial solution is delivering um, you know, 5G C-band service on that commercial network today to millions of subscribers. And mm -hmm. it's performing at the level um, of, you know, a hardware centric solution um, or other solutions. And so, um, you know, I think one, the proof is in the pudding. There've been other claims out there that, um, you know, first that were, you know, proof of concepts and things like that from others in the industry, but, you know, our commercial VRAN solutions out there um, it is delivering. And that's just one of them, you know. We've 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 made um, as you know, you know progress in Asia and in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, just uh, I want to say it was maybe even just yesterday. The days are running together. Um, <laughs> you know, we did a um, we did with uh, KDDI, you know, big uh, technology yep. forward uh, uh, vendor in in Japan um, yep. or service provider in Japan. So they're doing their five G. Um, so this was an industry first too. It's the first 5G standalone um, VRAN, you know, network with um, an open RAN compliant um, site. So it's again the beginning of their 5G standalone journey, if you will. Yeah. But it's in a um, you know ORAN VRAN setup. Um, we're also working with NTT Docomo, which uh, you know in Japan and, and doing um, open RAN compliant solutions uh, for their 5G setup, and then. You know, and in Europe, I think again, you know, the the proof point there is that we've, uh, you know, we recently did a the first ORAN um, site with uh, with Vodafone in the UK, uh, you know, which is part of their their big kind of five G journey, if you will, and um, and so that site was lit up, and uh, you know, it's the one of many that will will follow, and then we've got ongoing collaborations with Orange with their ORAN. Um, uh, lab that was recently uh, initiated, or initiated, I want to say last year, yeah. uh, as well as discussions with other operators like Virgin, you know, Virgin Media O2, and, and just like that. So the, the opportunities are growing in that, you know, in that particular region for us. I'm glad you touched on the performance piece because I think often naysayers talk about these solutions being more cost optimized versus performance optimized, and that's a great segue to my next question for you. I know that Samsung has been an early proponent of, of ORAN, Open RAN, um, relative to sort of your traditional incumbent, you know, competitors. Um, but often I think ORAN and VRAN get interchange. And mm -hmm. so we would love it if you could spend some time and kind of delineate the difference between the two. Sure. Yeah, no, that's a great point. You know, it's it it, it is funny because I think even with our, you know, the, the folks that we follow kind of in the industry and and the, you know, the the trades and stuff like that, it's always there seems to be always a kind of a mashup of the, of the terminology. Um, and so I feel like it's, there's always a need to unpack that. Um, I mean, the best way that I have, I've heard it um, characterized or explained to me is that, you know, virtualized RAN is, you know, taking all elements of the radio access network um, that can be driven by software um, and making those functions virtualized and then being able to put those things on a, a COT server, right? Yeah. And so VRAN is really, uh, you know, a, it's that, that migration, it's virtualization, it's, the, it's what we did with the core back in, I don't know, where it was 2015 or something like that, when it all went to kind of more, more software-based functions. And um, so it's both a technology choice, but it's also an architectural choice in terms of how you approach you know, your network. Open RAN, on the other hand, is really the industry effort to develop 
standards for RAN, um, open, I should say, open standards for RAN interfaces to allow you know, interoperability between the vendor's equipment. And so yeah. open RAN can use virtualized RAN approaches given the flexibility that you know, the software, the software approach allows for it. But that said, the open interfaces um, being driven by you know, the ORAN Alliance and, and, and TIP don't necessarily require a VRAN approach. Right. No, that makes perfect sense. And um, that's a pretty simplistic uh, explanation of the differences. I appreciate that. One final question for you, and I want to go back to ORAN. I mean, obviously, it's very compelling, you know, the CAPEX and OPEX, you know, benefits of, uh, of deploying open RAN. Lots of proof of concepts are, are going on. You know, you sort of spoke to some of the activities that mm -hmm. Samsung is engaged in. But this is bringing in a new sort of ecosystem of partners, right? And, right. Um, and, and so one of the challenges is with disaggregation, um, you have complexity. Mm -hmm. And it requires an integration. And so I'm wondering, what, what is Samsung thinking about with respect to the, the integration of, of Open RAN um, mm -hmm. from an operator perspective? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question, Will. I think you know the it, it's classic because it's you know, one of those one of those areas where um, with when when you have an industry that has for so long had um, you know had approached you know the you know, kind of the network in, in, in one way and all of a sudden there's different ways of doing things. There's always a lot of discussion and FUD that gets thrown around, you know, in terms of of the new approaches. So, you know, you know, open RAN's like, you know, it's kind of like doing, it, it, the classic analogy is like doing, you know, something that's never been done before. So, you know, it's not going to be without its risks and its challenges. So, yeah. um, you know, I think we've seen a lot of that. I think with, with open RAN, the, um, the thing that I think we have seen that is is helpful in terms of the the integration discussion and that that kind of what's the the upfront um, challenges and, and you know some of the focus that got put on you know some of the the larger um, uh, or the first really large scale you know announced um, uh, network with uh, with Rocketon was was um, you know I think one what we've seen is if the operator has taken an approach and you know, strategically has this kind of mindset to go down the open RAN approaches, there's, there's processes and organizational shifts and changes that need to be take place, I think, first and foremost at the operator level, right? Because at the heart of it, networks, you know, are collaboration between the technology provider and, you know, the actual service provider themselves. So, so part of that journey is is that and having that kind of set up and the the folks and the right folks and going to that software or interface and how do I manage, you know, um, a service rollout or a software update and I can test validate it, et cetera, and I'm doing it in more of a um, you know a different process than I would in a, in a hardware centric um, manner. So I think that's that's one thing. The other piece is that I think we have at least in our ORAN, you know, um, uh, deployments to date, either offered um, or served as, you know, the prime, you know, integrator. And, and I think one of the advantages that we bring to the table when you look at, you know, kind of ORAN and VRAN is um, you have some of the smaller players um, out there that don't necessarily have long lineage or the, the, the full, you know, what, you know, kind of stack, if you will, in terms of whether it's, you know, uh, both in the in the brand development perspective, but also you know we've got a perspective that goes from chipsets to devices all the way through the network. So you know there's a lot of things that that I think we have competencies in that we understand in in deploying and designing the network. Um, but that that notion of of going down and having kind of one throat to choke in the system integration process is is fairly key in these early days. Um, you know, and that's that's the other thing. It's you know I think for for us it's been Taking a mindset of is early days with ORAN, um, you have to have a very deliberate and you know um, methodical approach to it, um, and and go with with I think a a vendor choice in the RAN space that um, you know understands a lot of the complexities and has the processes, the personnel, et cetera, that have that have done that and can manage through it. Um, and I think you know honestly like the 
the discussion of delays and costs and things like that and early upfront costs and stuff like that, I think is a lot of noise because it's, it's new and it does, you know, it, it uh, you know, things are going to take time to develop and, and to run their course. Um, I think that's the other, you know, perspective we bring to the, to the table. Yeah. So. No, it's all super compelling. You know, I personally have been impressed to see Samsung's growth outside of the core Asian market um, over the last few years. I mean, your, you know, your your work with Verizon has been quite impressive, and you know, you've really you've really grown um, over the years. And so, I'm also looking very forward to spending time with Samsung at Mobile World Congress as well. But Derek, thanks for uh, the insightful conversation. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Good to see you again. Good to see you too.